Well, welcome back to Miller's in Motion. That's a big backpack. If it's your first time here, my name is Ryan, my wife is Lauren, and together we live in our fifth wheel and document the travels, the ups, the downs, all of the above. So, if it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. What are we talking about today? Well, outside of the RV stuff, one of the biggest questions we get is, what do we use to film on? How do we make the video? So, I know this isn't necessarily RV related, but I figured we'd go over all the things that I use and Lauren uses to make our videos. So, this is my camera bag. Uh, because we live in a small space, and I know in RV world this is a big space, but compared to a house, it's still a small space, we have one rule when it comes to camera gear, and really anything on the rig. Whatever camera gear we have, within reason, because some things can't fit in here, has to fit in this bag. So, I have to pick and choose my camera gear pretty wisely. Um, there's only two things that don't fit in here, and they do fit on the side, but I can only do one at a time, and that's the tripod you guys are sitting on, and a gimbal that I'll show you in a second. So, with that being said, um, this backpack's a little bit newer to me. I'm, I've struggled to find a backpack that I like that holds up. Uh, this is the Nomadic by Peter McKinnon. So far, I've loved it. It's big, it's heavy. I don't recommend it for most people, but if you have a lot of gear and you don't mind some weight, it's a great bag. Plus, it doubles as a travel bag, too. Um, I do keep a lot of things up in this front compartment here. Um, our stickers, some of the extra straps, and then this is where a lot of the computer components go when I'm actually in motion, like our name says. But let's just dive right into it. How about that? Um, now let me start by saying our main camera, microphone, and tripod is you guys. We will come back to that once we go through this bag. So far, I really actually do like the bag. It's got a strap so that when we're traveling via airplane, I can run my um, roll-on case through it so I don't have to carry it on my bag. Also, uh, I have this little clip container here. So uh, there's a company called Peak Design that makes a bunch of different types of things that you can clip your camera to, kind of like they're called a Swiss Arcus plate is what they're called. And you it allows you to transfer your camera a little faster kind of to a plate. Um, there's a company called PGY Tech that also makes some stuff. So we have a combination of PGY Tech and then um, Peak Design stuff. This happens to be a PGY Tech. Um, it's literally just a strap clip. It clips there and then if we're out hiking or doing something, I can take the camera and just pop it right there and it'll just hang right here. Um, now, as far as the camera gear, there's a lot of stuff in here that most people won't carry with them. So I'm just gonna start at the top and work our way down. So at the very top, uh, I, these are just two battery chargers, one for our, our uh, Insta360 and one for the batteries for the Sony. And then this little guy has been great. So, you know, a lot of times what can happen is you get a lot of cables and cords and all that stuff. So this is just a cable organizer. It's got some battery backup chargers in it. Um, you can kind of see it, it folds open. So, you know, it's got an extra phone bank in it. Um, but other than that, it's just a lot of cabling um, and then some power bricks. Um, some bigger power bricks, and, and that. So that's really all that's in there. Plus, uh, I have a travel version of a wireless charger for my phone and watch. Um, so those are in there as well. Also underneath here is just the sticky portion of uh, our grip. And then the, the grip portion sits here. Those just slide together. So if we ever need to throw the GoPro up on something, uh, we're good to go there. We're going to start with our peripheral cameras, what I call B cameras. Uh, they are all the things that we use to capture some stuff that I maybe don't want to use the big camera for, or maybe it's a weather situation where I don't want to get that camera wet, so on and so forth. So um, we do use GoPros as well as an Insta360 X2. So we do have the X2. If you notice, I've got it on a GoPro mount. Um, just, I like things that are easy. I like being able to flip fast. It speeds up the process of filming sometimes. Uh, or if something's happening quickly, I need to get a shot. I know that this is charged. I know that it can easily mount to any of the GoPro accessories in here. Plus having this instead of a um, standard, plus having this on a GoPro mount uh, allows me to double use everything that's in this bag from the action cam perspective. So, Instant360, we like this. Um, I, yeah, mixed, mixed reviews. I like the camera. Um, I just need to use it more. That's then that's a me thing. I just need to get it out and use it more. Um, and then we have two GoPros. One of them stays in this bag. That's the GoPro Hero 10 Black. I believe it's called Black. So this is kind of our go-to 
throw up a quick time lapse, uh, it's maybe raining outside, or we just need to be a little more inconspicuous without the big camera. Um, so that lives in here. Now there is one camera, well actually there's a couple cameras, but there's one GoPro that doesn't actually live in here. Um, so if you've ever watched our travel videos, you know we shoot almost exclusively on our big camera, which we'll talk about in a second. But sometimes we split up, and so this is our other GoPro. So this is the GoPro Hero 12. Um, it's been a great little camera. We have the media mod on it, and then it's on the, I believe it's called the Volterra grip. So this is a GoPro grip. It connects, we don't have it connected at the moment, but it does connect to the mod, uh, the media mod for the camera, and then it's got power buttons, all that. Plus it's a battery, it's got its own battery bank inside, so it allows the battery to last longer and the camera to go further. This is Lauren's. <laughs> so when we go shoot or do anything, this is what Lauren takes. Again, I have the same quick connect system on here, so if I needed to get it off, I can do it real fast. Like say we needed to use that camera, something's wrong with this one. I can do all those things really quickly. But um, Lauren prefers to be able to just kind of shoot and worry about it later. So um, we just leave this with her. So if we ever take like a horse show as an example, this is what she shoots on and then I shoot on, well, everything else. So um, that camera does not live in this bag because it goes with Lauren most of the time. All right, uh, accessories for the GoPros. Um, we have a couple of them. We have like a little shorty grip, um, the camera itself, obviously. Uh, we already talked about the big grip. Uh, and then I also have a um, suction cup mount. This does have an extension arm. I just don't have it on at the moment. And yeah, that's about it for the GoPro stuff. There is a few of the cables and all that stuff in here, as well as um, I use a battery storage charging case. So uh, I can put three batteries in a case and charge them all off of a USB-C and then they just kind of live in there and I'm able to still close the lid if I just reverse them or flip them upside down. That's how I know what's charged and what's not. So we don't shoot exclusively on these cameras and if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel or filming or doing anything else, you know, I heard somebody say a long time ago that um, it's better to start with the camera you have than to not start at all. And sometimes that is literally your phone. So we've shot entire videos on our phones. I don't love it, <laughs> but it got the job done. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're shooting, I try to live by the rule, um, use the best camera you have available. And sometimes that is this, you know, uh, we shot a video at the Perot Museum because we were in Dallas doing some appointments, didn't think we were gonna have time to do anything. And turns out we had three hours in the middle of the day to do something and we looked at it as an opportunity to go see something, but then also document it. So unfortunately, the only camera I had was my phone. So it, 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 you make it work, right? It's less than ideal um, for somebody that enjoys cinematography and wants something to look a certain way. But at the same time, it's about telling the story. And so sometimes your phone is good enough. Now, that being said, we use Lauren's phone. We use my phone. The next step up for us would be the GoPros. The 360 camera is kind of its own thing. Um, it's one of the few things that I wouldn't shoot a vlog on exclusively. I would do it on the GoPro again, you know, if we were in a situation where it was really wet or something along those lines, we would do that. Um, all right, moving on. So the next thing we have in here, uh, is a lot of those kind of secondary shots you see, uh, but we carry for our drone, the DJI Air 2S. It does fit in this bag nicely. So I've got the remote, I've got the drone itself. Uh, extra props and a few other things so and so everything just lives right there in its own spot the charger is just right next to it and then we have an extra battery for it as well and then kind of moving on down to the bottom here you can kind of see so we have our chargers uh, GoPro 360 camera um, accessories drone drone accessories this big empty gap here is where our main camera normally sits this is an extra lens for that main camera which we'll get to in just one second and then down here is just kind of a little hodgepodge of things so I have an extra shotgun mic. I've learned quickly that it's nice to have one of these. So this is a more compact version of the one that's on the camera. And so I keep that handy. Um, we also utilize the Rode Wireless 2 Go lavalier mics. So if we're in a noisier place or somewhere where we need to use these, these stay charged and live in here. Um, another battery bank that's too big to fit in this. And then this is our grip. So if we're not gonna use a stabilized grip, we use this guy, which I'm gonna leave him out for an explanation here in a second. Um, yeah, that's really about it as far as what's in this bag. Now, there are things up in this other compartment here, um, extra batteries. Uh, this is just an open compartment. This is also an open compartment. So this bag has more spots than I have things, which is a good problem. My old bag didn't have enough spots. So, 
Um, if I needed to bring something else along for a shoot or a hike or whatever, I have a little bit of flexibility. Uh, again, all my computer stuff's not actually in here at the moment, so uh, that's kind of a disclaimer. We're going to leave this out because it matters, but in doing that, we're going to start talking about the main camera, which is what you guys are on right now. So before I dive into the camera, um, we use a couple of different things in conjunction with it, and one of the most important ones for us is this guy. So this is the DJI Ronin SC2 gimbal. Um, I also added a quick adapter up here and had to change out this plate with something that Small Rig makes to make that adapter work. So what happens is that camera sits on it right here and then this gives us some of our um, more smooth looking shots. So if you see a lot of slow-mo or anything along those lines, this is probably what the camera's sitting on. Or if you see us walking around. Now it gets heavy. When I put the camera on the end of this, it gets pretty heavy, especially as you're standing out here with it. But it just does such a good job. Um, so this goes with us most places and it fits right on the side of the, well, it'd be like that, right on the side of the bag, just on the other side. And then this portion just comes off because it's the tripod. But we love this gimbal. You can remote shoot from it, so it's got the ability to record and do all that stuff. So that's what that cable hanging down is for. It plugs into the camera. So, for this next portion, we are going to switch uh, to the my phone. I know, I'm sorry. It kind of is what it is. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this around and show you the main camera and some of the things that we're using to shoot on before we switch back. Hey, okay. All right, so gonna move this guy over here and we'll talk about our main camera a little bit. So this is the Sony a7 IV. We did get it pretty much immediately when it came out. I have absolutely loved this camera. It's not the cheapest thing in the world. I understand that, but I'm a little picky when it comes to the visuals of our videos. And this is something that I wanna do invest in a good camera. We also do use it for other things like we do photography uh, and a few other things. So this is a very multi-purpose camera. I'm not going to go into too much detail on it. Just know a big reason why we like it so much is that you can quickly switch um, back here on this dial. You can quickly switch between photo, video, and it recalls all your settings. Um, it also just allows us to do a better job kind of quickly moving through it. As far as the lenses we use. So camera body is one thing. Lenses are another thing. Microphones are another thing. So... Um, when we first bought the camera, we bought the Sony G Master 16 to 36 wide angle lens. It is a phenomenal lens. It's a expensive lens, but it's a phenomenal lens. Somewhere around about the eight month mark of using it, uh, we had a little mishap and the lens broke, unfortunately. So uh, as just a secondary lens, we also have a 28 to 200 telephoto lens. When you zoom in, this one does move, uh, but it, you know, I didn't want to spend a ton of money on this because I knew we wouldn't use it very often, but I wanted to have one on, on hand just in case. So uh, we actually chose to purchase the Tamron 28 to 200 F28 to 5.6. That's the aperture on this lens. It's actually been a really good lens. Um, and so when the G Master broke, we had to shoot a few videos on that in 28 and it felt like you were here. And so that didn't work for us. So um, when I went to go back and buy another lens, I struggled spending that few thousand dollars on that G Master again. So we actually opted to try the Tamron wide angle, which is a 17 to 28 millimeter uh, F 2.8 fixed. So it stays in that aperture setting. So that's been actually a really good lens. You do notice a little bit of a difference in super low light, but we don't shoot a lot in really low light. So um, we really haven't noticed that much of a quality difference. Um, so if you're looking for a lens that's almost half the price, um, that Tamron's been a really, really good one for us. So let me flip you around and let's talk about the grip, the tripod. And so, sorry, this is all on the phone, but like I said before, here's our grip. So this is a Sony branded grip. You can see I put that same mount on. So that plate that fits into our tripod here will pop right onto here. It will also pop onto right here on our gimbal. So I try to make it where I can move around pretty easily. So again, this is the Sony a7 IV. Love the camera. These little doohickeys on the side are a Peak Design product. So this is a quick connect kind of strap program. So when we're filming some things, you know, I want to put a wrist strap on just in case there's a chance I might drop the camera. Or if I'm only taking the camera, I might have a, a neck strap on. So this allows us to use that stuff and not necessarily have to have it on all the time. So you just snap those in and now you got a strap. Now I talked a little bit about the grip. 
Um, we went with this Sony grip only because it also acts as a remote. So I can start movies. I can take pictures. If I have zoom in or out, I can do that. I can now also program a button here if I need to check something. And then it's got a lock feature here. So like when it's locked, it won't connect. It connects via Bluetooth to the camera. Um, what I have used it before, I mean, obviously it can be just a grip as well. And so I can hold it out here and point the camera back at myself. Um, it, I actually have found that I prefer just holding the camera from a stabilization perspective if I'm not going to use the gimbal. But in doing this, um, I can also use it as a remote. So like, let's say we're at a national park and we want to get a picture of the sign with Lauren and I in it and there's no one to hold the camera. Well, I can use our tripod, set it up, frame the picture, do all those things, stick this kind of in my other hand and put it behind my back or something. And I can just hit photo, hit video, hit whatever I want. And now I've got a remote. So I do like this. Uh, and then also if I'm doing a time lapse with the big camera and don't want to bust the big tripod out or don't have the gimbal out, like say in an airport or something, I would just use this little guy. So just kind of convenient to have. And then last but not least is our tripod. It is in a kind of funky position right now um, because it's not set all the way up. These legs extend pretty good, um, but it is a peak design travel tripod. There's a aluminum version and a carbon version. This is the aluminum version because that's cheaper. It is a little heavier, uh, but that's fine. <laughs> Not willing to spend another $200 on carbon. Um, absolutely love this tripod. It condenses down um, to essentially this size, and you can kind of give a, a comparison there. Um, and so this is the carrying case it comes with, and then that sticks on the side of the bag when we take it, but it's great because I pretty much have a tripod anywhere I go. Now, as far as up here, this little fuzzy looking thing. So that's our microphone. Uh, it's, our, it's one of our shotgun microphones. We do have another one. I prefer this one, um, and I'm not going to lie. I don't exactly remember the model, so I'll put it on the screen. But the reason why I like this is all of these settings. So it, you can actually do what's called a cardioid. So you can change your, your listening pattern, right? You can have it shotgun style right in front, and just with a flip of a knob, you can turn it where it'll listen all 360 around it, or you can open it up to where it'll listen essentially from here forward on both sides, or it can be directly in front of the microphone. So I like that you can do that. You know, sometimes if we're like we're doing right now, I'm talking, but I'm not on camera. I'm showing you something um, with a better microphone. You'd have to take it off, turn it around in the hot shoe right here. Um, also, it does have built in filters. So it's got a noise cancellation, a low cut, and you can just turn it off. I leave it on noise cancellation. That seems to do pretty good with the wind. And then you can also change your dB levels. So you can go from zero dB, minus 10, minus 20. And then you can adjust your volume here if you're going in manual mode. To be honest, I leave it in auto. It's one of the only things I leave in auto. Uh, I shoot almost exclusively manually because I want to control the shot more. Um, but the audio from this um, that you guys have seen has all been shot in audio and I've been pretty happy with it. So another big advantage to this um, to this camera or to this microphone setup is that typically, like if you put a road or something else on there, you'd put the so there's a hot shoe here, which means the difference in a hot and a cold shoe. A cold shoe is just a mount. A hot shoe means that there's actually a connection to the camera there, um, so you can power things that kind of stuff. So that's what powers this microphone. But if you notice, there's no cord. Normally, you get a cable, um, a 3.5 millimeter jack cable that comes down here, because this is a hot shoe mount Sony, you don't have that. And that uh, I've noticed just in previous, before I got this camera, I would burn through microphones and cameras because I would get caught on something. It either messed the jack up here or it messed the jack up there. And then next thing you know, one of the two things would be ruined. So uh, yeah, we absolutely love this microphone. And like I said, we do have the other one and I'll put the model of both of these on the screen. This one's the same idea, but it relies on the camera. Um, it also does a pretty good job. I just like the pickup of this a little bit better. Um, this one is relying on, auto, on full auto all the time. So if I did need manual control, I would have to switch this anyway. The downside of this is it's taller. It gives the camera away a little bit more versus when this sits up there, it's not quite as big of a deal. Um, both are great microphones if you're looking for one of them. Okay, so as you can tell, it's a pretty bright day behind me. Um, we're outside now, obviously, and the last thing I want to talk about, it goes back to the camera, so I'm sorry I'm jumping around, is what's in this little pouch here. This does live in our camera bag, but I wanted to kind of show you what it does. So one of the biggest questions I get is, how do you get that blurry background? Well, if you look around right now, 
and we'll use trucks and other RVs, you don't have much of that blurry background. Well, because the sun is really bright, the camera's having to adjust, and how I do that for video quality is I adjust the aperture so that you can actually see my face and I'm not completely blown out. So here, just for one quick second, I'm gonna show you what happens if I shoot the way I want to to get that blurry background. All right, well, can you see me? There's little pieces of me that you might be able to see, and I'm actually moving around the same manner, so you're just seeing little things focus around. But this is what happens if we do that. Let me go back to where you can see me. Okay, and we're back. So, how can I use the settings where everything was really white, which by the way we call that being blown out, and that's massively being blown out. You'd never see that in one of our videos, but for the sake of this, I wanted you to see what it was. Well, you use something called a neutral density filter. Think of sunglasses for the camera, right? And that's what we keep in here. So there's two versions of ND filters you can get. There's what's called fixed and variable. Variable, you actually rotate and they can get darker or lighter inside. I have not found one that I'm willing to pay for that I like, only because neutral density filters can cause what's called vignetting. And so if you ever see one of our videos and, oh, that's perfect because the sun's back there. So if you ever see one of our videos and you notice that um, there's some like darker areas right through here, that was probably using one of those ND filters. I don't, I don't like that look. It, it, it's, there's an aesthetic to it, but I don't like it. So what's cool about these is on the camera itself, there's actually a magnetic ring. And these, all of these lenses are actually magnetic. So all I do is pop them right up there. And you can already see, well, maybe not, but you can see how it kind of works there just as I hold it up to the screen uh, and what happens on that right side. So here is a great example. So that's an ND4. You know, as I put this on, that f-stop's gonna come down. So we're fluctuating between 13 and 14. It kind of keeps moving back. I did put it on um, essentially a shutter auto, so it's adjusting automatically for that. Um, but what I want you to do is as I put this on, pay attention to those trees back there. So right now they're pretty clear. I'm gonna pop this on while I'm talking to you. It's gonna readjust for a second. Now look at them, right? So now our f-stop, our aperture, is all the way back down to 2.8 and you get blurry background. Uh, that's something else we also call bokeh. Now, lighting, all that stuff, to be honest, how we shoot, we work with it as best we can. But when we're outside, I always like to keep these neutral density filters on, or ND filters, and this one happens to be an ND64, um, on us, and because what that allows us to do is because what that allows us to do is create that really cool background. And you can see now how much blurry it is as I kind of walk around. All right, let's go back inside where it's less bright. So this is another way of looking at it. If you notice, I'm a little darker here and my ISO, which is essentially the internal camera trying to adjust, I left the ND filter on. So this probably, this image looks a little grainier. My f-stop is low, but my ISO is through the roof. I'm actually at 12,800. It fluctuates depending on how I'm doing the lights. And so it's a little ridiculous. You also know I have a darker tint. So if I take this off, we coming with me. See how I got bright, now I'm coming back down. Well, now I'm still at an F2.8 and my ISO is regulating and now you get the image that you're used to seeing. So, people don't realize actually what goes into all this. There's actually a lot of work that goes into how to film these things correctly. Um, and I am a little bit of a nerd when it comes to cameras. I love it. So hopefully if you're one of the ones that asked this question of how we shoot our videos and the gear we use, this explains everything. We do have our Amazon store. There is a camera gear section. Everything we use is on there for the most part. Sometimes Amazon doesn't have everything. Um, I can tell you that we buy, we buy things from two different stores. We do use Amazon when we're in a pinch, um, but the people over at BNH Photo based out of New York City have been amazing. We actually bought the camera through them. Uh, and yeah, that's everything we do. We try to use them because they're just a knowledge base is amazing. Uh, and then obviously anything we supplement with Amazon or if we need something faster. <sighs> I know that's a lot of talking head and I know it's not RV, so I'm really, really sorry. But uh, we do appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining us in this very random video. Um, we have some fun stuff coming down the pipeline for you. Uh, you know, we're starting a rig search. We're, we've got the RV Unplugged Rally. We're going to try and document as much as we can of. So there's some cool things. Um, so stay tuned. We will see you guys next weekend. Also, we've been doing Joke of the Day. We've been doing it on Instagram, Facebook, and then on YouTube as a short. So uh, join us if you need a little motivation or a little...
So join us uh, in the mornings. It's kind of a fun little quick 30 second, just dad joke style thing. Um, but it's meant to be a positivity thing. There's so much negativity in this world. We definitely would rather everybody be a little happy. Everything is better when everybody's happy. So have a great day. We will see you soon. And mom, if you actually watch this video, bye.